Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm the Code Otter and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a curve tent for a card game in Unity. For this we will use Unity's splines package. Let's get started. First we import all packages that we will need. The first package is Unity's splines package. It lets you create and edit smooth curved paths in the Unity editor. You can use these paths to move objects, create roads or guide cameras, making it easier to design flowing movements and routes in your games or scenes. Another asset we will use is Dootween to animate our card movement. It has a powerful free version and is pretty cool, but you can of course use any tweening library. We also want to have a clean and organized project. Let's create a few folders in the assets folder. In the Assets folder, we create a Scripts folder, a Sprites folder, and a Prefabs folder. I have prepared a card sprite, so I will place it in the Sprites folder. We have to make sure that the texture mode is Sprite and the Sprite mode is Single. We are ready to go now. Let's prepare the card prefab first. We drag our card sprite into the scene. Make sure that the game object position is at zero. We then rename the game object to card and drag it into our prefabs folder to create a prefab. Like I said already, we will use the splines package to create a curved hand. To create a custom spline, we can right click in the hierarchy and select spline Draw Splines tool. With this tool we create our spline now. To draw a spline, just click in the scene view. Each click will create a so-called knot. For our curve we will need a spline with three knots. It doesn't really matter where you place them as we will adjust their positions in the inspector. After the third knot, just press the escape key to exit the spline creation mode. In the inspector your spline has a spline container. First, let's set the position of our spline game object to zero. Then we adjust the three knots of the spline. To get an even curve, let's try those values. The curve for our hand looks good already. To make it look even better, we can click on the knot in the center of the spline and change the mode to Bezier and Mirrored. Now you can drag the handle like this to make a smoother curve. You can experiment here for a while to get the right curve for your hand. Also exit the 2D mode in the scene view and make sure that the knots up vectors, those little lines here, face the direction away from the camera. You can do that by changing the Z rotation for all knots from 270 to 90. Otherwise, our calculation later in the code will not work as intended. The curved spline is done now. Another small thing we want to make is the card spawn point. This will be the position where our cards will spawn when we draw them. For this, we just create an empty game object and call it spawn point. Now let's finally create our hand manager. This class will be responsible for managing our card positions in the hand and for drawing cards. Let's create a new script in the scripts folder and call it hand manager. Then we create a new game object and call it hand manager as well. We now drag our script onto the hand manager game object. In the hand manager script, we need a few inspector references. We need our maximum hand size, our card prefab, our spline, and the card spawn point. To keep track of all the cards in our hand, we also need a list of game objects. The heart of this class will be the update card positions method. 
This method will be responsible for placing our cards at the right position and rotation on the curve. In the update card positions method, we first have to check if there are cards in the list. If we have no cards, we cannot position anything and therefore we exit the method here. Then we have a few variables here. The card spacing is the space between the cards. To calculate it, we just divide 1 by the number of max cards. 1 is the length of our spline here. A spline has always a length of 1. A position on the spline is always a float between 0 and 1, where 0 is the start of the spline and 1 is the end of the spline. To position something in the middle, it has to be at 0 0.5 for example. If we want to space out our hand cards on the whole spline, we have to divide the length of the whole spline by the number of max cards. Then we have the first card position. This will be the position of the first card in our hand and it will help us to calculate the other card's positions. We could position the first card on the value 0, but this would be unnatural. If there is only one card in the hand, we want the card to be in the center. If there are two cards, the first card moves towards the start of the spline and the second card is added with the previously calculated spacing. This way we make sure that the cards are positioned from the center of the spline rather than from the beginning. So the first position will be the center, so 0 0.5, minus hand cards count minus 1, times the card spacing divided by 2. If we have just one card, it should stay in the middle. Otherwise, we want to distribute them evenly in both directions from the center and therefore we divide by 2. The last variable we have here is the reference to our spline and the spline container. Then in a for loop we go through each card and position it at the right position. First we calculate the position, let's call it p, on the spline as float value. The position of each card is the first card position plus i times the card spacing. Then we use a spline method to get the position as vector tree, which converts our float position p to a world position. To calculate our rotation, we also need the forward vector and the up vector for our point p on the spline. The forward vector is the direction of the spline at point p, and the up vector is the direction which was indicated by the three lines in the scene view that we set to face away from the camera. To calculate the rotation, we use the quaternion look rotation method. What we do here is that we set our forward direction to the up vector, so away from the camera. And because we have now our two directions, the up vector and the forward vector, we can calculate the third direction with the cross product, which will be the up direction for our card. Now that we have our position and rotation, we can use do tween to move our cards. You can write transform dot do move to move your card and transform dot do rotate quaternion to rotate your card. The first parameter is always the destination, so the end position or end rotation. And the second parameter is the duration of the movement. To test our behavior, we also need our draw method. In the draw card method, we first check if we can draw a card by checking the size of our list. If we cannot, we exit the method at this point. Next, we instantiate the card prefab at the spawn point position and we also add it to our list. Now that the drawn card is in the scene, we need to move it to the right position on the spline. For this, we just have to call our update card positions method. In the update method, we can check for the space key and then draw a card. Back in Unity, we can assign all the references in our hand manager script and then we can test everything. If we press the spacebar in play mode, we draw a card. We can draw until we have 10 cards in hand. The cards are aligned smoothly along our curve. This looks good. 
So now we have a curved hand. I hope this video helped you. I would really appreciate a sub or a like if you liked the video. Thank you and see you next time.